your God. It's Easter. What an incredible day. It started really early. It was still dark when we left the house. God, thank you for today and for Jesus coming back to life. After church, we had the community Easter egg hunt. I know I've been doing it maybe all my life, but I still love the tradition and the fun. We all had our baskets and we were ready to start. When they said go, I was off. In all the years we have done the egg hunt, I've still never found the special golden egg. But somehow, I knew this was going to be the year. Whoever finds that one gets the special prize. This year, it was a gift certificate to Gladstones, that really cool store downtown. I kind of got away from the crowd and found some great eggs too. But then there it was, the golden egg. It was off, kind of hidden beside a tree. I ran over to it, but just as I picked it up, Daisy ran over. She had seen it too. She didn't have any eggs in her basket. And I think she'd even been crying about something. I think I knew the look because I babysit her and her brothers sometimes. Oh, I really wanted that prize. But something, I don't know. Maybe just because it was Easter. But it seemed like the right thing to do. I gave her the egg. She was pretty happy. God, thanks for your son, who put us first by laying down his life and coming back to life. Help me to always put others first, just like he did. Happy Easter, Maria.
What's up, John? You staring at dirt for fun? Kinda. I just planted some flowers and I've heard that vegetation grows faster when it listens to music. Haven't you ever heard you should talk to your flowers? No. Well, you should. No. Music supposedly makes them react faster. I just have to find the right kind. Nothing there. John, this is ridiculous. There's no way that. It's time for another dance party with DJ Daisy. Hey! You've got to be kidding me. This isn't even a good song. Hello everyone, I'm John. And I'm your host, Brandon. Uh, and this is the so-and-so. This is the Green Garden Call-In Hour, where we're taking your calls and giving you advice on how to make your garden beautiful and verdant. Caller, go ahead. Hi, Brandon. Big fan. What's so, going on right now? I'm trying to make sure my succulents stay healthy during the upcoming summer months. Do you have any advice on watering frequency? Thanks so much. Love the show. Hey, caller. <laughs> Thanks so much for calling in. My thoughts are that all plants need water. So go ahead and water them all the time, every day, as much as possible. <laughs> That's terrible advice. Uh, never mind, don't water them, ever. They're smart plants, they'll figure it out. Next caller. Hey, Brandon, long time listener, first time caller. I'm trying to plant a blueberry bush, but I don't really know much about soil pH. Is that okay? Why not? As we all know, PH stands for plant hands, which blueberry bushes don't have, so you should be fine. Brandon! Uh, we've got to go to commercial break, but we'll be back soon with more insights and tips. You know nothing about gardening. I know! I ended up hosting this radio show somehow, and I, I still have no idea what I'm doing. How long have you been hosting this show? I don't know, seven years? Seven? Look, How did you get no this show? There's no time for this, John! I need help! Could we possibly bring on someone who knows stuff? Okay, sure. <clears throat> uh, please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having me. Just one second. And we're back after that short break. We've got a guest with us today. Could you please tell us who you are and what you know? Hi, I'm Lily, and I would say that I know a fair amount about gardening. Great to have you with us today. I am so sorry about this. I don't know anything about gardening, but I have to give these people advice. Is there any way you could help me out? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy okay, to. Okay, that's great. Please, okay. So we've got a caller on the line. You're on the air, caller. Hey, I've heard a lot about composting, but it sounds like a lot of work. Should I try it? Don't. Putting posts in your garden will make it look bad. I Composting is when stuff like leaves and food scraps decompose and turn into nutrient-rich soil. Right, so you don't want things decomposing in your garden. That's gross. Uh, actually, you should absolutely give composting a shot. Not only is it good for your garden, but it's a great way to find uses for food scraps that would otherwise just end up in a landfill. Uh, so what I'm saying is composting it's is... a good thing. Exactly. We have to take a quick break. Lily. Thank you so much for being on the show. You've proven in one question that you know more about this topic than I ever could. <laughs> well, I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I don't think that's true. I think you can know all these things. You just have to study and work and don't talk on your radio show about things that you're not sure about. Oh. Well, thank you for taking the time for helping me understand more about gardening and, and more about hosting a call-in gardening <laughs> radio show. Would you be interested in taking over by any chance? Oh, uh, I mean... Why not? Awesome! <laughs> I'm happy to help people when I can. Yeah, all right, that's great. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning into the show today, everyone. This is your host, Brandon, signing off. 
And this is your new host, Lily, signing on. So when it comes to composting, you want to make sure that your soil is nutrient filled. You also want to make sure that- oh, Hey, wow. thank goodness Lily was here. I know, right? <laughs> but I still think posts make for an unsightly garden. No, 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 she, that, that we're not talking about, didn't you just listen to, no, 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 never mind. It, it, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys! Kellen, my man, what's going on today? Today we're going to be talking about a story from the book of Luke where two men happen to be... I know this song. Diane Duet here reporting for Ancient News where we only cover the oldest possible news. Later, floppy disk. Neither floppy nor disc. But first, since the crucifixion of Jesus, we've heard reports of some incredible things. Some eyewitnesses have even said they've seen Jesus alive. We go now live to the city of Emmaus to speak with one of those witnesses, Cleopas. Cleopas, can you tell us what happened? So, my friend and I were walking on the road from Jerusalem to the village of Emmaus. We were talking about all the stuff that's been going on in Jerusalem. And this guy comes up to us and he asks us what we're talking about. <laughs> we're like, you don't know? And what were you talking about? Well, you don't know either? We were talking about Jesus, of course. How he was a powerful prophet and was sentenced to death. How he died on the cross. We were both bummed because we were really sure that he was going to be the person to set Israel free. But Jesus was crucified and put in a tomb. That's what I'm saying. Three days ago that was, but that's not all. Today, some friends of ours went to Jesus' tomb and didn't find his body. They saw angels who told them that Jesus was alive. Amazing. Yeah. And, and you told all of this to the man who came up to you on the road? Yeah, and get this. He said we were being foolish. He said, and I remember this exactly, he said, how long it takes you to believe all the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? And what did that mean? We weren't sure either. So, so this guy explained, he went through the scriptures, uh, starting all the way back with Moses and the prophets, all of it. It was like God had this plan for everything that's been happening. Fascinating story. I'm sure that's all there is to it, though. Actually, there's Back to you, Kellen. Okay. Well, that isn't exactly all there is to it, but that is how it started. You see, Cleopas and his friend were just arriving at home when they... There it is. We're back with more ancient news. Later, silly bands can actually be used as rubber bands. Maybe they're not so silly after all. But first, breaking news on the story we just left. We have here the friend who was walking with Cleopas on the road to Emmaus. That's right, my name is- No time for that, this is breaking news. Last we heard, you were on your way to Emmaus when a stranger walking with you explained everything that had been going on. Right, and when we got to the place we were staying, he wanted to keep walking, but we wanted to hear more. So we begged him to have dinner with us. And did he? He did. We sat down right here in this room, and that's when things got really crazy. The guy blessed the bread, and the second he broke it, we could see who he really was. And he was? Jesus. Shocking. Yeah, he was alive just like our friends had been saying. And then, just like that, he disappeared. So Jesus himself had been walking with you that whole day? The entire time. But after he vanished from dinner, Cleopas and I booked it back to Jerusalem because we had to tell the disciples what we saw. I'm being told we have one of Jesus' disciples, Simon. Simon, is all this true? Is Jesus alive? Yes. Absolutely fascinating. Jesus of Nazareth, once dead, now alive again and still taking the time to help people understand why he's here. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your story with Ancient News Cleopas' friend. Actually, my name time is- Time for a break. Up next, where exactly is Waldo? 
I'm Diane DeWitt for Ancient News. Back to you, Kellen. Wow, that is some really good news right there. It's incredible enough that Jesus came back from the dead, but he wasn't done. He took the time to show himself to some of his followers and explain what God was up to to people who might have been confused. He helped people understand. That's another way Jesus was humble. Yep, and it's a way for us to show humility too. When we understand something and someone else doesn't, we can be patient with them and help them learn. Uh, like you do for us, Kellen. Yeah, right, and, and like Lily did for you and your radio show. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. No problem, I'll see you next time. You know, I feel like I understand a little bit more about humility now. And I understand more about gardening, but I've given seven years of bad advice. Just think of all the dead plants. Yeah. Reveal the question! Whoa, hey, great. Today's question is, when has someone helped you understand something? Yeah, every day of my life. Yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff going on all the time. Oh, like kids can explain to me how to install apps on my phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just learned from a podcast yesterday why you should never eat undercooked chicken. Oh no, that's good for you. It's chicken sushi, they call it. But no, that, chicken you know sushi. nothing about cooking either, do you? No, I don't. Okay, that's all we got this week. We'll help you understand. <clears throat> We'll help you understand some stuff again next week, we hope. Yeah, until then, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So-and-So Show. See you soon. See no, you and soon. do not eat undercooked chicken Are or raw chicken. Don't eat any of it. Are you sure? I am 100% positive. All right. Yeah. It's time to get on dirt thought of DJ Daisy. And I am Dan D. Lion. Kick it, scene. Yeah! I feel the beat! I think there's some beats growing in the soil! Your love and kindness I will see